This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Recently, I was going about my day. It was a typical day for me, nothing special. I took my slippers to be repaired at the slipper repair shop. They also repair zippers, by the way, in case you were wondering. Then I went to the umbrella store, and as I was picking out my 11th umbrella, a question dropped into my mind that was so urgent, I fell over on top of a pile of dusty knee socks. The 10 umbrellas in my arms scattered all over the floor. As I got up and tried in vain to get the dust off of my favorite plaid yellow pants, I decided right then and there I would write a story to answer the question that had so abruptly interrupted my umbrella shopping. This is the story I came up with. It's called Mr. Hedgehog Gets the Spots. Take it away, Calvin. Remember, with no picture, you have to imagine pictures in your mind. You can imagine the pictures however you want. Okay, let's go! Little Hedgehog and BB, her best friend of all time, were playing in the woods, swinging from the pliable branches of a weeping willow tree, when they noticed a large crow staring at them from about 20 feet away. Little Hedgehog. Yes? Do you see that large crow staring at us with a severe expression? I do, BB. I believe we should back away slowly. No sudden movements. Okay. Little Hedgehog and BB began to take careful paw steps away from the crow. The crow's stare turned into a glare. Little Hedgehog and BB gulped. Gulp. Then the crow sighed heavily and swooped down from the tree. Ah! Oh, relax, the crow said upon landing. I'm not going to eat you. Too crunchy. Little Hedgehog and BB sighed with relief. I'm a messenger crow, apparently. I could have done so many things, the crow said wistfully, staring into the distance. I anticipated sending important messages. Messages to the forest queen, perhaps, or messages about dire situations at a quarry. Little Hedgehog and BB blinked. I have a message here from the father of one of you. What are you, short-beaked echidnas? We are hedgehogs. We are hedgehogs. It must be from my dad. All right, let's see here. The crow withdrew a slip of paper from beneath a wing and squinted at it. Of course I forgot my reading glasses. The crow brought the paper right up to her face. Okay, your dad, uh, Mr. Hedgehog, has come down with the dreaded spots. He says, go home now. That's it. All right, I'll be off now, hopefully to relay something of greater import. The crow flew away. Little Hedgehog and BB gasped. Not the dreaded Not spots. Not the dreaded spots. They both thought back to when they'd learned about the dreaded spots in school. Good evening, class. I'm Miss Fluffinson. I'll be your substitute teacher for the night. Alas, Miss Spots has come down with the dreaded boysenberries. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Miss Boysenberry has come down with the dreaded spots, I meant to say. She'll need to be in bed for quite some time. But we will have so much fun together, won't we, children? A small possum raised her paw. Yes, do you have a question? I do, yes. What are the dreaded spots, exactly? What a wonderful query, Ms. Fluffinson trilled. The dreaded spots are a frightful condition that afflicts older hedgehogs and related creatures, such as moon rats. It causes lethargy and unsightly red spots to appear, and hedgehogs must stay in bed until it passes. 
Thankfully, it does not affect young hedgehogs. Bibi raised her paw. Yes, you there? My cousin's shoemaker's bootlace supplier's mother came down with the dreaded spots and had to drink garlic tea for two weeks. Doctor's orders. I love garlic tea, said Garth, a prairie dog who revealed little about himself. Little Hedgehog and Bibi exchanged a look, but said nothing. Well now, isn't that interesting? Let's get on with tonight's lesson, shall we? Bibi. Yes, Little Hedgehog. I hope my dad doesn't have to drink garlic tea for two weeks like your cousin's shoemaker's bootlace supplier's mother. Indeed. The two tiny hedgehogs scampered back to the burrow to check on Mr. Hedgehog. He was in bed when they arrived, and he was in the middle of a strange dream. Dad? Mr. Hedgehog, are you okay? Huh? What? Something about porcupines plotting something. Oh, what was it? Oh, I lost it. Little Hedgehog's and Bibi's eyes went wide. Bibi, my dad is really sick. Clearly. Oh, Little Hedgehog did the, uh... The crow! Yeah, the crow. It found you. It did, yes, Mr. Hedgehog. Reluctantly. (sighs) I didn't know how else to reach you. Can't get out of bed. Well, we are here now, and we're going to take care of you. We will tend to you while you shan't leave your bedchambers, Mr. Hedgehog. So loud. Voices are too loud. Sorry, Dad. Apologies, Mr. Hedgehog. Look, um, I need you to go to Cecil. I've heard him talk about some doctor. Get him to call that doctor for me, okay? Can you do that? Of course, Dad. Indubitably, Mr. Hedgehog. Minutes later, they were on Cecil's burrow step, ringing the doorbell. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. After many rings of the doorbell without success, they switched to knocking. Cecil finally came to the door with his pet cricket, Jemaine, perched on his shoulder. Cecil peered at Little Hedgehog and Bibi, squinting as though he couldn't quite remember who they were. Jemaine hopped on his shoulder with excitement. Cecil? Yes, Jemaine? Those are the two small hedgehogs who occasionally visit from the next door burrow. The one on the left is the enthusiastic one, who's always dreaming up inventive ideas. The one on the right is the monotone one, who has great expertise in wilderness survival techniques. Little Hedgehog and Bibi beamed. Cecil nodded. That's right. Thank you, Jermaine. Hello! Good evening. I guess this means that is still Jermaine number nine. Jermaine began hopping frantically on Cecil's shoulder prickles. Cecil? What does she mean, Jermaine number nine? Cecil scowled. Nothing whatsoever. Don't excite yourself. Now then, Jermaine is in training to become a life coach, and we were reading through his class materials. Little Hedgehog and Bibi exchanged a look. We do need to get back to that. And then I need to begin on the night's kettlebell exercises. We won't keep you long, but my dad is sick. Mr. Hedgehog cannot leave his bed. Oh my, from what is he suffering? The dreaded spots. He is beleaguered by the dreaded spots, Mr. Cecil. Cecil's expression turned grave. The dreaded spots. That's awful. For a moment, Cecil stared out into the dark night forest. Everything was silent except for two wolves howling in the distance. Come inside and tell me the rest. Soon they were seated inside Cecil's burrow. Cecil's kettlebells took up most of the room. Jemaine number nine's life coach class materials took up most of the rest. And he would love for you to contact your doctor. He would like to receive medical care from your preferred practitioner, Mr. Cecil. My doctor? Who might he be talking about? Jemaine whispered something to Cecil, and his eyebrows raised. Yes, 
Thank you, Jermaine. That must be it. He turned back to the small hedgehogs in his living room. I do know an excellent doctor, although I must warn you, she's rather eccentric. Bibi grinned. I aspire to be eccentric one day. Yes, you would, wouldn't you? Cecil, shall we send a messenger dragonfly to the doctor? My thinking precisely, Jermaine. An hour later, Little Hedgehog and BB were back in the burrow, setting the kettle to boil to make Mr. Hedgehog a cup of tea, when the door burst open. An enormous rat, wearing thick glasses and a stethoscope, was standing in the doorway, looking astonished. Oh my, I simply knocked. The door to Little Hedgehog's burrow was crumpled. It seems I don't know my own strength. Little Hedgehog and BB shared a significant look. Um, hello. Hi. Are you the doctor we called with the help of a dragonfly messenger? But the doctor was too busy glancing around the burrow to hear them. She seemed lost in thought. She sniffed the air. It smells like snails in here. We love snails. They are both nutritious and delicious. The doctor finally seemed to notice them. She zeroed in on BB and approached her with a puzzled look. She removed her glasses, wiped them thoroughly with a kerchief from her pocket, put the glasses back on, and peered at BB once again. Oh my. Yes, this is a dire situation. I see what's going on here. Bibi's not the patient. I am fine. The doctor blinked. Oh, is that right? Where's the patient, then? It's my dad. He's in bed. Show me the way. They all walked down the hall to Mr. Hedgehog. My goodness, it's much, much too bright in here. Are you trying to give him the shakes? The doctor said, immediately closing the window shade in order to block out the moonlight. Mr. Hedgehog blinked his eyes open slowly. Uh, hello? The doctor approached Mr. Hedgehog, flicking her long tail. She peered down at him, seeming to feel no need to introduce herself. Um, Dad, this is Dr... Dr. Ratzberger. Oh, okay, Dr. Ratzberger. Uh, hello, Doctor. The rat sniffed the air. I see exactly what is going on, she said almost to herself. How long have your ears looked like this? They must be causing you intense discomfort. Do they recently shrink, or has this been a gradually progressing issue? The doctor pushed her glasses further up her nose and waited. Mr. Hedgehog blinked, groggily. My ears? Yes, when did they become this size? I must say, I'm surprised you can hear me at all. They've always been this size. My goodness, no wonder you don't feel well. What? No, I, I have the dreaded spots. <gasps> the dreaded spots. Well, why didn't you say so? Dear me, the dreaded spots. You must feel terrible. With those ears and the dreaded spots? My, my. Mr. Hedgehog peered at the doctor, but seemed too exhausted to speak. The doctor seemed to be lost in thought. She stared upwards at the ceiling, muttering to herself. Little Hedgehog and BB waited for her to speak. Finally, Little Hedgehog said, Do you think there's anything that might help? I'm going to give you a list of do's and don'ts. The doctor said, interrupting. Oh, okay. This will be helpful. Do keep the window shades closed. Don't open them. BB disappeared into the shadows and reemerged with a notepad on which to jot down the list. 
do give him three tablespoons of water every 47 minutes. Don't give him more than eight tablespoons of water every two hours. Do make sure he sleeps. Don't let him sleep more than 9.2 hours at a time. Bibi scribbled the instructions in the notepad. Little Hedgehog blinked. Do ask him the following questions every hour on the hour, except while he's sleeping. The questions are, what is your name? When were you born? What is the name of the forest queen? What night is tonight? And who won last week's forest kickball game? Don't ask him any other questions, as it might overwhelm him. Dr. Ratzberger paused and stared out into the distance, thinking. She withdrew a small, leather-bound journal from her coat pocket, jotted something down on a fresh page, then smuggled it away as if hiding it. She began muttering to herself, Watermelon. No, no, that's not right. Papaya. Oh, that's not it either. Are we listing fruit? Because Bibi and I love listing fruit. We do. Persimmon. Tomato. Kiwi. Cucumber. I'm trying to remember the name of a specific fruit your father will need to ingest every 11 hours. Oh, can you describe it for us? Please figuratively paint a picture of the fruit and we will identify it. It looks... Actually, it, it looks like the two of you. Pineapple. pineapple! Ah, yes. Pineapple. Have your father eat seven-eighths of a tablespoon of pineapple every 11 hours for the next three days. Okay. Also, you must wake during the day to open his shades and give him sunlight. But not too much. After 20 minutes of sunlight, rapidly hide him in the cupboard. Hmm. It will get worse before it gets better. But he will get better after he gets worse. Little Hedgehog and Bibi blinked. Before Dr. Ratzberger left, she gave them a vial of medicine that she instructed them how to use. If when he wakes and he blinks eight times within 25 seconds... Give him two tablespoons. If he only blinks seven times, or if he blinks 16 times, give him three tablespoons. Okay. No problem, B.B. said, dutifully writing this down in her notes. Then the doctor was gone. Over the next few nights, B.B. came over and she and Little Hedgehog tended to Mr. Hedgehog. B.B. kept the doctor's list on a clipboard, and together they followed her instructions. They counted Mr. Hedgehog's blinks. B.B., did he just blink eight times? I counted seven. Okay, three tablespoons it is. They also did their best to keep the burrow in order, doing chores that Mr. Hedgehog usually did himself. Oh, I'm going to have to clear the twigs out of the gutter soon. Mr. Hedgehog murmured. Did it last night, Dad? We accomplished that task for you, Mr. Hedgehog. Huh. After a while, Little Hedgehog and Bibi came to have a better understanding of how Mr. Hedgehog spent his time. My dad does a lot of stuff, Bibi. Apparently, your father handles numerous things, of which we had little to no knowledge. They also had to make sure Mr. Hedgehog had peace and quiet in order to rest during both day and night. On the third day, a choir group of frogs gathered outside, rehearsing their newest material. Little Hedgehog and BB ambled out, groggy from being woken up. Um, hi! Good morning. The frog stopped singing and glanced at them. My dad is sick and he's resting. Is there any way you could rehearse in a different location? Mr. Hedgehog requires a quiet atmosphere in order to get adequate REM. No problem. Come on, guys. The frogs hopped away, singing as they went. 
In the following days, they had to request the movement of a particularly loud owl, a forest comedy show, and then he said, not while I'm in charge, (laughs) and a trio of whistling pigs. I didn't even know pigs could whistle, BB. Me neither. After they had shooed everyone away, No problem. Hope your dad feels better. It was finally quiet. BB, do you think my dad is frequently asking loud groups of animals to move to a different location so that I can sleep during the day? We have no way of knowing, but it does seem as though he does many things to which we are not privy. After what felt like forever, but was probably a week, Little Hedgehog and BB were in the kitchen. BB was preparing a meal, while Little Hedgehog conversed with a friendly moth who had flown in the window. And then, when I finally showed my cousin, he didn't stop laughing for an hour. And moths have a really difficult time laughing. Oh my! All of a sudden, Little Hedgehog and BB heard the unmistakable sound of Mr. Hedgehog's paw steps coming down the hall. Sorry, I have to go, Little Hedgehog said to the moth. My dad is up. The moth waved goodbye and flew away. Little Hedgehog and BB scampered so they were standing together, smiling as they waited for Mr. Hedgehog to appear. When he entered the kitchen, he looked nearly like himself. The big red spots that had covered him a few days earlier had faded. Hi, Dad. Good evening, Mr. Hedgehog. Hello. Good to see you both. What smells so good? BB smiled. I prepared a meal, Mr. Hedgehog. Wow, BB, thank you. My mom provided the recipe. It is tried and true. It's so good to see you up, Dad. Your spots are looking much better. Yes, soon you will be back to your usual wry, jolly old self, Mr. Hedgehog. Thanks, BB. I hope so. Hey, I had the weirdest dream. There was this enormous rat who said she was a doctor. She was really concerned about the size of my ears. Little Hedgehog and BB giggled. That wasn't a dream, was it? That was real. It actually happened, and it was strange, Mr. Hedgehog. But you are better, so perhaps her many instructions, which we followed to a T, were beneficial to your recovery. Maybe, or maybe it was time that did the trick. BB used a ladle to scoop some of the food she'd cooked onto a platter. She handed it to Mr. Hedgehog, who looked down at it questioningly. BB smiled and waited. Mr. Hedgehog took a bite. Little Hedgehog's eyes went wide as she waited for her dad's reaction. It's not horrible. I am pleased you find my cooking palatable, Mr. Hedgehog, BB said, grinning prickle to prickle. I do. Thank you, BB. But I, I'm still not that hungry. I think I'm going to go lay down for a bit. But I can tell I'll be better soon. Okay, Dad. Sleep well, Mr. Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog and BB stayed up late, playing charades. A lizard on a unicycle. Yes. Until the sun crested the hill. Mr. Hedgehog snored in the next room. All was as it should be. Ah, oh, that was fun. I hope you loved this. Oh, I have an email. Dear Rhea, what kind of nonsense was that part at the beginning? Why would a slipper repair shop also repair... You know what? I'm just going to skip through this part. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You said a question dropped into your mind, but you didn't tell us what it was. That can't be right. Hold on. Let me check my notes. Hmm... You're right. How could I tell you that a question came to me that was so forceful it knocked me into a pile of dusty knee socks without even telling you what it was? The question was, what are Little Hedgehog, BB, and Mr. Hedgehog up to right now? I hope I answered it well enough. 
Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. I reached out to my Little Stories premium subscribers for help with sound effects in this story, and they delivered. Thank you to Maxine, Ben, Lila, Ivy, Oscar, June, Natalie, Hannah, Esther, Iris, Jack, Isla, Boney, Elena, Lena, Ibrahim, Fox, Carter, Amira, Mithali, Emma, Cole, Rose, Andy, Olivia, Liam, Maya, Noah, Dylan, Eva, Axel, Penny, Cora, Ella, Kaya, Nora, Cosmo, Hannah, Madeline, Oliver, Henry, Layton, Harrison, Adalu, Early, Lyndon, Grady, Teddy, Ruby, Katie, and Kaja. You can get more of the stories you love and an ad-free, promo-free listening experience by joining Little Stories Premium. The link is in this episode description or visit littlestoriespremium.com. And thank you, as always, for listening in.